Hey, it's Chris Klust. I'm going to show you a, a browser extension that I put together today based on a, a tutorial that I followed on YouTube. Um, and I'll show you who, who put that together in a little bit. But here is the extension and you get a little pop-up that says sepia level. And so you can see you can adjust the amount of sepia in the, in the color in, in a web page. Um, so let me, while I'm on YouTube here, let me just go ahead and do this. Create, create Firefox extension. So it's this one right here. How to build an extension for Firefox in less than five minutes by Firefox add-ons. Um, so I did originally create this in Firefox uh, or for Firefox. Um, there was a little bit more complex of a setup to get it working there because Firefox has more security than Edge, and um, and, and so I couldn't just add the extension to Firefox without it getting approved by Mozilla first. And with that, there's like a three or four week wait, as far as I know. I don't know how else to do it, but that's what I found. Um, I was able to get it to work in Firefox, but in like a test type browser. Um, and so I don't normally use that. So I'm like, well, maybe I can try this in Edge. And I got it working here. So some tweaks I had to do to get it working in Edge. Um, but luckily I got it working. Um, I don't have Chrome on my computer because at one point Chrome was scanning my external hard drives. So I um, uninstalled Chrome and I pretty much primarily use uh, Firefox these days. Uh, but let me go ahead and go into extensions. Now this is the Edge browser. Um, so here's the one that I put together. Um, so let me go ahead and show you how you um, you, you can install um, uh, an extension. So you got to turn on developer mode, and then it allows you to pack an extension and then load that uh, package. Um, but first, you have to have the files, and so here are these four files. Oops. Um, these four files are the ones that I uh, created based on that uh, YouTube tutorial. So you have a manifest, you have a couple uh, JavaScript files, and you have an HTML. Uh, the manifest describes the extension, tells what, it says what permissions are needed, and I'm not even sure if this is needed. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more testing with this later on, but it's good enough for now. You know, you get the the title, the description, and you can actually see that information in details. This is where the let's see, version one has the size and all that. Kind of cool. Um, where was I? Yep, so that was the manifest. And then you need an icon. So I just found this on Google Images. Um, pick one that's uh, like royalty free or whatever. Creative Commons uh, licensing, so you know that way you don't get any, uh, you know, I don't know, get in trouble or something using someone else's work. Um, let me just show you the, the HTML when you actually open it as its own web page. This is all it is: is this name and then like this this bar here. Um, if I were to actually hit the edit button on this, you can see how it's actually written here. And here it is, the, the label and the input type is a range. So I guess that thing is called a range from zero to 100. So it's pretty detailed for how much sepia percentage that you wanna add to the page. Um, and then while I'm here, I might as well just quickly, you know, in case someone's interested, I'll just go ahead and open these up. So go ahead and Pause the screen if you if you need to, and you can kind of see how this stuff works. Um, what else is there? So yeah, once you have those files, you would click uh, Pack Extension. You would uh, find the folder, so which is this folder here, which is where those files are located, and you click Pack Extension. 
um, it creates that process creates two files. It creates this one here, which is the package, and then it creates another one that's a dot. Uh, hold on, let me. Dot pem file, which is a private key. Um, so I and basically both of those files, they actually went, they actually went to my desktop. Even though this is the folder I uploaded, it uh, went to the parent folder. So maybe there's some type of structure which I'm not aware of, which. Uh, maybe you would have a folder, a parent folder called extensions, you know, and then the extension, uh, specific extension. So maybe those, that's how they're expecting you to set it up. But anyways, I move this package, uh, the CRX, to back to this folder, and then I clicked load unpacked, which then I selected the folder, select, and then basically loaded here. You don't need this on anymore from there. Um, you just got to turn that on. Let me just go ahead and reload YouTube. And click on my icon. There it goes. So you can see it's pretty accurate how much CPU you want in there. Um, and then while I'm here, uh, I'll just show you at least the testing that I had to have done with uh, for Firefox, because like I said, I couldn't load it to Firefox. Um, so let's see, see John, we go to CD desktop, and CD, I have a sepia ext Firefox, and then it's uh, what was it web ext run? Let's see if I did that right. Hey, look at that, NP NPM, so it's loading it. Running web extensions, use verbose, oh, open on another page, so give me a second to move that over. Um, so this is if you're doing it with, fire, testing with Firefox. Um, so I had to download uh, node.js and this web-ext, and um, let me just go to Mozilla. I'll just show you. So there's my, again, my extension. So you can test it here in Firefox. Um, like I said, there's security constraints that wouldn't allow me to um, just put this into a normal Firefox uh, browser. The kind of cool thing about testing this in Firefox is with this program, I just if I just edit those source files and I just hit R, oh, let me hit R again. See that time update? So it does it that quickly, where it repackages those uh, source files and re-uploads them to um, to Mozilla, and you can test your changes like immediately. So it's kind of cool. You know, there's probably something like that for the other browsers as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I wanted to show you.